so many men that never grow up. They remain old infants way into their 30s and 40s. They can't even take care of themselves and talk less of their parents or relatives. They remain boys. So first, you need to ask yourself, are you responsible? Are you a man? If yes, then we can move on to the next level, which is what type of man are you? Are you low on the food chain with little authority or control over your life? Or do you solve problems, provide safety and security for your circle, tribe and family, and help the tribe survive and thrive? In other words, are you a high value man? Well, in today's video, I'll be showing you seven habits that make a high value man. A high value man is not swayed by the opinions of others. Lots of people in this world have their opinions on how to live life correctly. Even people who haven't and couldn't walk in your shoes for a second. The internet also contributes to this problem of random people acting as specialists. But does that mean high value men don't listen to anyone? Of course not. A high value man is discerning about whose counsel he values. When faced with a medical concern, he consults a qualified doctor. If he aims to improve his physical fitness, he seeks guidance from a professional trainer. What if he doesn't do is let random individuals dictate how he should lead his life? You see, a high value man possesses a clear sense of purpose. He values good advice and information because those are scarce. And trust me, you should never underrate the power of bad advice. It can really ruin your life and everything that you've worked for. So how can you avoid this problem? High value men should always start with Marcus Aurelius's meditations. Why? Well, because you need to listen to your inner voice and instincts to avoid listening to the wrong people. As you progress, you'll find mentors and individuals whose advice will do you great. But remember, as you continue your journey, Especially in today's era of social media, you find a multitude of voices. Some may be strangers, others acquaintances, but not all of them are experts, and some might not have their own lives in order. Remember this, a high value man recognizes that the ultimate freedom is the ability to make his own informed decisions. The high value man gathers valuable resources. Most men look to financial success as their primary goal. Yet money alone cannot give you complete happiness. Men like Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus rightly view money as a component of happiness, but not the main thing. Regardless of how much a man makes, it's important to actively gather valuable resources, such as friends, mentors, investments, and even books. Now, some of you might be wondering why place resources over money. After all, can't money get you those resources? First of all, those resources can get you a steady inflow of money. Secondly, there's no inflation or tax on some of these valuable resources. When you think of gathering valuable resources, you should prioritize expanding your knowledge. Yes, a man who continuously learns is a man destined for enduring success. You need to ace an upcoming interview, dive into research, and get to know the company inside out. Facing a situation requiring a new tire for your car, maybe? Research how to replace tires. Always adapt and seek to improve your ever-expanding skill set. As they say in the Marines, improvise, adapt, and overcome. A high-value man is resilience. A man's strength extends beyond the physical realm. While benching 225 is pretty impressive, it won't necessarily determine your success as a man. Emotional and social strength are the real game-changers. It's about your ability to maintain composure in the face of adversity and confront challenges with determination rather than retreat. You see, no matter the resources that you gather, you will always have your downtime. Everything will not always work out. Sometimes you'll fall on your way, but even if a high value man falls nine times, he'll get up 10. Understanding how to develop yourself in this regard is a vital starting point in a man's life. It's not about overnight transformations into superheroes. It's about nurturing a resilient mindset. Whether you want to help your wife through challenging work situations or become the pillar of strength in your community, a high-value man should never give up on what he believes and on what he aims to achieve. It's the self-respect that comes from this that will enable you to hold your head high and command respect whenever you step into a room. A high-value man makes investments in high-value individuals. 
Listen, every high-value man understands the importance of making wise investments in the lives of those who are equally successful or more successful. This is what seminars and summits are for. As the saying goes, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. But if you want to go fast and go far, go with a friend. Invest in finding and keeping high-value friends. Attend programs featuring your mentors and other successful people, and then you can learn a lot there and also meet like-minded people. However, there is a crucial caveat to this principle. High-value men make sure to link up with men whose motives are not pure. This holds true for friendships, professional relationships, business partnerships, and even romantic relationships. Now that we're halfway through the video, why don't you subscribe to support the channel? Do the same for the like button if you're enjoying the video. All done, let's get back to the list. A high-value man takes total control of his life. Get this, the easiest way to tell a high-value man apart from an ordinary man or a boy is if he has a victim mentality. I once had a friend who was always saying something like, she ruined my life and made me lose my job. My parents were poor, so I never got the opportunities that the others got. He had a victim mentality. Everything that went wrong in his life was never because of his own actions or inactions. It was always someone else's fault. So, once I decided to get my life together, I just kind of cut him off. A high-value man always takes responsibility, full responsibility for everything that happens to him. He's in a charge of maintenance and organization. He's the captain of the ship, and whether the ship will reach its destination depends on him. By the way, he steers the ship towards the path of success with the utmost care and determination, neglecting bills, overlooking routine car maintenance, or failing to take care of his health is not in his playbook, just in there. A high-value man takes care to prevent his life from descending into chaos. He takes control of his life, claiming ownership over every facet to ensure its progress. A high-value man is consistent. If you want to be reliable, you simply have to be consistent with what you're doing. A high-value man is somebody that people can count on. Consider this. Would you feel secure driving a car with brakes that only function 50% of the time? The answer is a likely resounding no. It's a recipe for disaster. Trust and reliance function in much the same way. To earn the trust and respect of those around you, they must have confidence that you'll be there when they need you the most. If you come across as unreliable and inconsistent, it'll be an uphill battle of winning the trust of the people around you. Besides winning trust and being reliable, it's, the, it's consistency that'll make you better at what you do. And as they say, practice makes perfect. Yes, it really does. You need to consistently practice that skill to become a specialist in it. You need to consistently hit the gym to get and stay in shape. A high-value man learns to communicate effectively. Words seriously have power, and if your words don't have power, well, you aren't powerful. So first of all, a high-value man values his words. But why? They are effective at helping him achieve his goals. He uses the right words, and those words open doors for him. Thing is, many men grapple with how to convey messages effectively, particularly in written form. For instance, an email that you perceive as friendly banter may offend the wrong person. So, a high-value man knows how to communicate. He observes the people and the environment that he's in, and discerns what is and isn't suitable within the current context. Now, what are some tips for communicating effectively? Say little and mean what you say. Always try and talk about things that you specialize in. Show courtesy where necessary, but always maintain self-respect. Chapter 2 the Art of Non-Comparative Confidence Alright, let's talk about confidence. Not the kind that's inflated by putting others down. That isn't being a high-value man. High-value men don't need to belittle others to boost themselves up. They exude self-assuredness that comes from within, not from tearing someone else down. You see, true confidence isn't about shouting from the rooftops about how amazing you are. It's knowing who you are, and not needing anyone else's validation to prove that. Let's break it down. You've got your self-assured, high-value man who's comfortable in his own skin. He's the guy who's not threatened by other people's success, who doesn't feel the need to one-up every story. 
who doesn't use comparison as a crutch. And then you've got your arrogant pretense of a man who's so insecure that he needs to make others feel small to feel big. Imagine you're in a group setting and someone shares a great accomplishment. The non-comparative confident man genuinely celebrates that success. He doesn't feel the need to launch into his own list of achievements to feel important. He knows that his value doesn't diminish just because someone else is shining. Now, the arrogant guy. He's the one who can't stand the spotlight shifting away from him. He'll immediately counter with his own stories, belittling others' achievements to make his own seem bigger. But guess what? It's so transparent, and it's not a good look. People might pretend to be impressed, but deep down, they, I promise you, they are rolling their eyes. Chapter 3. Vulnerability as a Strength Listen, because I'm about to shatter a myth that has been holding too many guys back. Vulnerability is not a sign of weakness. In fact, it is one of the strongest weapons in a high-value man's arsenal. Society teaches us that vulnerability is a flaw, a chink in the armor that should be hidden at all costs. But let me tell you straight, that's such bullshit. Vulnerability is like the secret doorway to genuine human connection. It's the key that opens doors that you didn't even know existed. When you let your guard down and share your struggles, your fears, your insecurities, you're inviting someone into your world, your real, unfiltered world, and that takes guts. It shows that you're not just another cardboard cutout, you are a real person with real layers, emotions, and experiences. Think about it. When someone else opens up to you, how does that make you feel? Feels like they're handing you a piece of their soul. And suddenly, you're connected on a deeper level. That's the power of vulnerability. It's like taking off your mask and allowing someone to see you, the raw, authentic you. Now, I get it, you're probably thinking, but doesn't that make me look weak? No. Vulnerability is strength. It is the strength to admit that you are human. The strength to share your truth, even if it's uncomfortable. The strength to face your fears head on. High value men don't hide behind a facade. They step into the arena of vulnerability. They are armed with knowledge that it takes a strong person to be open and real. But of course, do it with caution. You can't be vulnerable with everybody. Only the people that you trust and you want to be closer to. So, how do you embrace vulnerability without coming across as a sob story? It's all about balance. Share your experiences, your lessons, your feelings, but do it with a purpose. Don't just dump your emotional baggage on someone's doorstep. Instead, share what you've learned from it. Express your growth and how those experiences shaped you into the person that you are today. For instance, instead of saying, I'm a mess, I have no idea where my life is headed, try saying, I face challenges and they've taught me to adapt and overcome. Now I'm focused on building a future that aligns with my values. See the difference? Vulnerability with purpose is empowering, not weak. Chapter 4. Embracing Imperfections all right, let's cut through the smoke and mirrors. Nobody's perfect. Not you, not me, not anybody. But you know what's really interesting? Embracing those imperfections. It's time to ditch the exhausting pretense of projecting an image of perfection. Look, we're, we're bombarded with images of so-called perfection day in, day out. From social media to advertisements, we are fed a constant stream of stunning bodies, curated lifestyles, and filtered realities. And what does that do to us? It makes us feel imperfect. It makes us think that unless we measure up to these impossible standards, we are somehow lesser. And guess what? It's all a facade. It is a smokescreen designed to sell products and sell ideals. And you, my friend, are not for sale. You are a unique, imperfect person with a story to tell and a journey to share. When you own your imperfections, you radiate reliability. You become a three-dimensional character in a world full of pretenders. People that don't want to admit that, not even to themselves, they share flaws, despite that being okay. Think about the people who inspire you. Are they the ones who seem flawless? Or are they the ones who have battled through challenges and emerged stronger? I'd be willing to bet that it's the latter. Chapter 5. Harnessing Eccentric Passions Here's the thing, dude. 
Everyone's got something that they geek out over. Whether it's ancient history, vintage records, competitive knitting, gaming, or collecting rare tea leaves. It's those passions that make you come alive, that make you excited to dive deep into a topic or a hobby. And you know what's really magnetic about that? It is that unapologetic enthusiasm that shines through when you talk about it. Too many guys, though, let these passions stay hidden in the shadows. Maybe you're afraid of being labeled as weird, uncool, maybe. Maybe you think your interests won't impress anybody. Well, I'm here to tell you that those passions are your golden ticket to intriguing conversations and genuine connections. Imagine you're at a gathering and a small talk is circling the room. But instead of joining the generic conversation about the weather, you dive into stories about the intricacies of ancient Mayan architecture or the historical significance of vintage typewriters. You're gonna stand out so fast, my friend. You will be the guy who's not afraid to embrace the unconventional, who's not afraid to be himself, who's not afraid. And who the hell knows? Maybe these people are also interested in this stuff you don't know. And let's talk about attraction. It's attractive because it shows depth, curiosity, and a willingness to pursue what makes you tick. Plus, it's an open invitation for like-minded individuals to step out into your orbit. You would never in a lifetime actually truly want to spend your life with a woman who doesn't like you for who you are. So why invite people into your life who don't? Becoming a high-value man isn't about conforming to anyone's expectations. It's about embracing your own unique strengths and qualities that set you apart. Chapter 1. He prioritizes personal growth. A high-value man isn't content sitting on his ass. He knows procrastination is a silent killer. And don't you dare whisper to me that you're comfortable where you are. Comfort is the graveyard of ambition. A true man stays hungry, feeding on knowledge and experiences ever on the road for ways to improve himself. And this isn't some half-hearted effort either. This ain't no New Year's resolution kind of crap that fades away come February. This is a daily grind. An obsession. He's got a vision. A purpose. He devotes himself to it like a monk. Every decision he makes, every action he takes, is weighed against this one question. Does this move me forward? And if it doesn't, he tosses it aside. And so should you. Chapter 2. He Seeks Constructive Criticism A high-value man ain't no prince who can't stand a little heat. He doesn't shy away from criticism, quite the contrary, in fact. He thrives on it. The only thing that could hurt a real man's pride is not knowing his flaws when everybody else does. He's not living in some fairy tale where everybody applauds him and he's the hero, he's the main character. He'd rather face a brutal truth than live a comfortable lie. But why? Well, because he knows the road to improvement is paved with the stones of criticism. You can either stub your toes on them and whine, or you can put them on top of each other and use them to step up. If you're so fragile that a few harsh words are gonna shatter your world, you've got so long to go, you are so far down the mountain. You gotta tough it up. You gotta seek out criticism, not hide from it. Only then can you rise above the rest. Chapter 3. He regularly takes calculated risks. A high-value man doesn't play it safe. He doesn't live in his comfort zone. But don't start grinning thinking he's some reckless fool. Hell no. He's not about jumping off cliffs without checking for rocks below. The key word here is calculated. This man knows the thrill and the value of taking risks, but he also understands that uncalculated recklessness is a one-way ticket to disaster. So, he measures, he weighs, he calculates. This isn't just about business or financial risks, mind you. It's about life decisions, about standing up for what you believe in. Push the damn boundaries for once, dude. Embrace uncertainty and be okay with it. Nothing worthwhile comes easy. Sure you've heard that before, but it is true. Chapter 4. He trains his body like he's preparing for war. High-value men don't work out to get a beach body ready. No, they work out because they're going to war. A war against weakness, against complacency, against the luring comforts of modern life. They work out until their muscles scream for mercy, until they've sweat out every last drop of mediocrity from their bodies. Yeah, strong body attracts looks. Yeah, helps you move better, feel better, live longer, but that's not why he's going to the gym. 
He's there because he knows every extra rep, every extra mile, every grueling session. Hammers in the lessons of discipline, resilience, and endurance deep into his core. He understands that the body is the mind's first battlefield, and the victory here translates into victory everywhere else. You think he cares if it's raining outside? You think he stays snuggled in bed when it's time for his run? No. If anything, that challenge fuels him. He's out there running in the rain, lifting in the cold, turning adversity into strength, making the impossible possible. Chapter 5. He focuses on providing value. A high-value man is a provider. He brings value into every room that he walks into, every interaction, every relationship, every endeavor. His focus is always on what he can give, not what he can get. It's not about self-sacrifice or being a doormat. It's about contributing in a meaningful way, about recognizing that his worth is not defined just by what he owns or what he achieves, but by what he shares and contributes. If you only take and you never give, it's time that you make a change. Chapter 1. Consuming Knowledge I don't care how brawny or charismatic you are, if your head is as empty as a drum, you ain't high value. So here's the deal. You want to become high value, right? Well, then start by opening a book or clicking on a podcast or watching a documentary. And don't you dare say to me, I don't have time for that. Bullshit. High value men make the time. And not only that, do you really not have the time? Do you spend any time on your phone in the mornings? An hour or two, day or night? You're telling me that that couldn't be spent learning? <laughs> okay. Real high value men carve out the time. They carve it out of their day as if they're whittling a piece of wood because they know without knowledge, they are as good as dead in the water. Do you think Elon Musk built his empire by playing Fortnite? No. He consumed knowledge like a starved animal. So put down the controller and pick up a book. And don't get smart with me either. I don't mean just any book. Don't pick up any Fifty Shades of Grey or some soppy romance. I'm talking about books that feed your mind, that challenge your beliefs, books about finance, philosophy, science, technology, strategy, whatever it is. Books that make you squirm because they're too damn tough to digest in one sitting. Podcasts? Same rule. No mindless chit-chat. Don't listen to the Bad Friends podcast because it's just funny. It's not good. It's not intellectual. You want podcasts that make your brain sweat. Podcasts that introduce you to new ideas, new ways of thinking. And don't even start with documentaries. None of those pseudo-intellectual craps. I'm talking about the good stuff. Documentaries that delve into the depths of human history that explain the mechanics of the universe, that take you on a journey through the rise and fall of civilizations. Here's what you gotta understand. Consuming knowledge is not a leisurely activity. It is not something you do just to pass the time. It is a daily ritual, as vital as eating, as vital as breathing. Swallow your excuses and consume knowledge like your life depends on it and you will be better for it. Chapter two, pursuit of mastery. A high value man is not a jack of all trades. He is a master of one or a few. Don't you start yapping about being well-rounded or some nonsense. Yes, you should be well-rounded. You should have a basic capability and a lot of other traits. But pick a lane. You want to be high value? Well, then get some tunnel vision. Pick a craft, a field, a discipline, and get right down to it. And again, I'm not saying become ignorant to all other things. Do not become narrow-minded. Do be well-rounded to a certain degree. But God, pick a field, pick a craft, pick a discipline, and get down to it. Dive so deep into it that you become, you become insane. You come out on the other side with a goddamn PhD. Now, I'm not saying ignore everything else. Of course not. You need a basic understanding of the world. But if you think skimming the surface of a hundred different things is the way to go, you're sorely mistaken. High-value men have a core. They have an axis around which their world revolves. For some, it's business. For others, it's technology. It could be art, it could be sciences, or even a sport. It doesn't matter what it is. What matters is that you strive for mastery in it. And mastery, my friend, is not just about being good at something. It's about being so good that you can do it with your eyes closed, your hands tied behind your back, hopping on one foot, shouting the alphabet. You think Michael Jordan became the greatest of all time by shooting hoops casually on the weekends? No, he poured his blood, sweat, and his tears into the game. He was the first on the court and the last one to leave. He endured pain, exhaustion, and even ridicule, all in the pursuit of mastery. And that's what separates the good from the great. That's what makes a man high value. So, what's it going to be? You're going to float aimlessly or you're going to anchor yourself to something. 
Once you commit to the pursuit of mastery, there ain't no turning back. It's a one-way street, my friend, but at the end of it, there's greatness. There is the kind of greatness that is not bestowed, but is earned. The only kind of greatness that means anything to me. Chapter 3. Challenging Comfort Zones Let's get this straight. Your comfort zone is your biggest enemy. That cozy little bubble you've built around yourself doesn't have any oxygen in it. It's suffocating you and it doesn't have any reality in it. Nice and easy doesn't cut it. Nice and easy doesn't make a high-value man. Nice and easy is for those preferring to live and die in mediocrity. And that ain't you. Or at least it better not be. If it is, again, get out of here. I don't want you. Listen, I get it. Comfort zones are... Well, well they're comfortable. It's familiar, it's safe, but... Here's the thing. Growth doesn't happen in safe, familiar spaces. It happens in the wild. It happens in the unknown. It happens when you're pushed to your limits. When you're out on a limb, when you're dangling over the edge, that is when you find out what you are made of. A high-value man is like a piece of iron. You want to know how iron becomes steel? Oh, hey, guess what? Iron doesn't become steel by sitting around in a rock and just waiting for heat to come to it and form it into something. It doesn't sit around. It's going through the fire. It's being pounded, shaped, quenched. It is being worked with. And it's a harsh process. But the end result is something stronger, tougher, and more resilient. So, ask yourself this. Do you want to be a lump of iron or a slab of steel? If you said steel, great, because that means you're ready to challenge your comfort zones. You are ready to step into the fire. Now, I'm not saying go bungee jumping tomorrow or quit your job on a whim. Be smart. Well, obviously bungee jumping is very good, but don't just do it. Don't just drop everything. No, challenging your comfort zones is generally best done small. It's taking the stairs instead of the elevator. It's waking up an hour earlier and then another hour earlier the next day. It's reading a book instead of binge watching Netflix and maybe even not reading an entirety of a book as long as you would watch Netflix, but maybe... You were going to watch Netflix for three hours, because that's just something most people can do easily. It may be instead of that full three hours, you spend the first hour reading, and then maybe tomorrow you ramp that up to an hour and a half. It's saying no when you'd usually say yes. The point is to do something different, something uncomfortable, to push your boundaries just a little bit each day, and as you do, you're going to notice something amazing happen. You're going to start to grow physically. You're going to get an inch taller. No, but spiritually, you'll get an inch taller. You'll start to evolve. You'll start to become more. More confident, more competent, more capable. Challenging comfort zones is not being reckless. It is breaking the chains of complacency. Chapter 4. Respecting Time There's this thing that a lot of people fall victim to. When I say victim, I mean they're guilty of doing it to other people. You blatantly disrespect to other people's time and you take it for granted. It's been under your nose the whole time. No, it's not your mom. It's something even more precious. It is time. Time, ladies and gentlemen, is the currency of life. It is the one resource that you cannot make more of. The one thing you can't go back for and bargain or barter for. Every single second that ticks away is a second that you won't get back. I mean, it's pretty obvious stuff, but it's also harsh, right? I mean, that's the reality, though. So stop wasting it. High-value men understand the power of time. They respect it, they harness it, and they make it their ally, not their enemy. Accomplish enough where you feel like the time that you get to spend on this earth was a gift and you used it well. Because a lot of people have regrets when they get older. So you're not going to get old and not have regrets. Life will come with regrets. The point is to minimize it. So stop wasting time on pointless pursuits and start investing it in what really matters. See that guy binge-watching TV all day? Or the other guy playing video games for hours on end? That shouldn't be you. You're better than that. You gotta be. When you respect time, you use it wisely. You're intentional about it. Every moment, every minute, every hour counts. You are on a mission. And every second brings you closer or further from your goals. And don't you dare tell me, but I got all the time in the world. No, you don't. Nobody does. Matter of fact, if you're not suicidal your entire life... Most people, when they get to the end of their life, they realize just how short it really was. Ask a 40-year-old. Ask a 40-year-old how old they feel and how, how recently they feel like they felt like they were young. Yeah, it's going to be weird. So ask yourself, what are you doing with your 24 hours? Are you growing? Are you learning? Are you improving? 
Or are you just wasting it, letting time slip away, letting every breath be wasted? Be honest. If you're not happy with the answer, that's good. That is the first step to change. Cut out the nonsense. Focus on what matters and make every second count. And remember, time management is not just about being busy. It's about being productive. It's about getting shit done. Working smarter, not harder, as the saying goes. Set priorities and stick to them. Respect your time. Make it count. And honestly, that's probably the most valuable piece of advice I could ever give you. Because once your time's gone, it's gone. I, I'm 23 right now, and I, I, I can't fathom talking to like a 14-year-old version of myself and saying like, snap is going to go by and all that. You, you'll, have, you'll have wasted nine years of your life. It's, I think that's the math works out there, but whatever. I, you get the point. It's so limited. Chapter 5. Fearless Exploration Do you ever notice how the best stories are all about exploration? The ones that grab us, that make our hearts beat a little faster. They aren't about the guy who stayed home. They are about the adventurer, the explorer, the man who dared to step into the unknown. And you want to know why? Because there's something so powerful about exploration. There is something about it that calls to us, stirs something deep inside our monkey brains. Something fearless, something wild. You feel that? That's the spirit of a high-value man. Yeah, if you want to be that man, it's time to wake up. It's time to start exploring. And no, I'm not talking about booking a flight to some exotic locale. That's great, but that's not the point. I'm talking about exploring the unknown territories of your life, of your potential, of your capabilities. I'm talking about daring to take the road less traveled, having the guts to step out of your comfort zone and venture into the wild. But here's the thing. The exploration is not about being reckless. It's not throwing caution to the wind and hoping for the best. It's about embracing the unknown, yes, but it's also about being prepared. It's about understanding the risks, weighing them with the rewards, and then taking calculated, informed steps forward. You know that dream that you've been secretly nurturing? That one that you haven't really told anyone about because you're afraid that they'll laugh or tell you that it ain't gonna happen? Well, that's where your exploration starts. That is your Everest, my friend, your moon landing. And don't you dare dismiss it as fanciful or unrealistic. Don't you dare let fear keep you from exploring it. Fearless exploration is about embracing uncertainty and using that as fuel. You are meant to be, you are meant to believe in the possibility of success even when you can't see the path ahead. Be willing to fail. Be willing to fail over and over and over again if necessary because that is, it's gonna happen. And these are the things that need to happen in the pursuit of something greater. You see, high value men understand that failure is not the opposite of success, it is a part of the process. Time to face the truth, dude. These are not just habits to add to your morning routine or to check off your to-do list. They're more than that. These habits are a lifestyle, a way of being. Remember, it's not just enough to know these habits. You gotta live them. You gotta breathe them. You gotta do them. Embody them. The only thing standing between you and the high-value man you want to become is your commitment to the process. Will you commit? I mean, your habits determine your future, so I'd say choose wisely. Habit 1. They don't care or avoid hate. If you want to succeed in life, you have to stop caring about what others think about you. You need to stop avoiding hate, criticism, and rejection. In fact, you need to embrace it. People are going to hate on you no matter what you do. You could be the most kind, generous, and successful person in the world, but there's going to be a hater out there who's going to dislike you, who's going to say that, oh, well, they have all this stuff, they're privileged, and they, yeah, 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 they'll find something. It doesn't matter. And you know what? That's okay. The unapologetic man knows that his value isn't determined by the opinions of others. He values hearing the opinions of others, but he doesn't let hate or criticism hold him back from pursuing his goals in life and living life on his own terms. He doesn't waste his time trying to please everyone or seeking validation from others. If he wasn't trying to hurt somebody and he's just trying to do his own thing for himself, he's fine and he doesn't need validation from others. No, instead he focuses on his own personal growth and success. He understands that hate and criticism can be a valuable tool for self-improvement. It can help him identify his weaknesses, challenge his beliefs, and push him to become a better man. The unapologetic man also knows that hate and criticism say more about the person giving it than it does about him. He doesn't take it personally or let it affect his self-worth. He simply acknowledges it and moves on. 
developed some kind of ability to tell between criticism that was given to you because they're jealous and criticism that was given because you deserve criticism. Again, this isn't just to say, ignore all criticism, but a real, unapologetic man can tell the difference. Now on to you. Stop caring what others think about you. Stop avoiding criticism. Embrace it and use it as a tool for personal growth and improvement. Or you won't make it. Have it too. They don't lie. Let's face it, lying has become a commonplace practice in today's society. Uh, you know what we'll say? We'll say in human society for all of time. Since the first human has been able to speak and say, <laughs> we've lied to each other. People lie to get ahead, to avoid trouble, and to protect themselves. But the truth is, lying is a true sign of weakness. It's a sign that you can't handle the truth, and you lack the courage to face the consequences of your actions. Real men never lie. They always tell the truth, even when it's hard or uncomfortable. They understand that lying only creates more problems in the long run. They only allow f emotions to fester. It's more important to say to your friend, I have this problem with you than to just let that fester and to let resentment develop for all of your friendship. Honestly, the only true way to earn someone's trust is through honesty. Self-explanatory, but hard to practice. When you lie, you not only damage your own integrity, but you also damage the trust that others have in you. That once that trust is lost, it is real hard to regain. Real men know that. They make it a priority to always be truthful, no matter the situation. Lying is a habit, and it can quickly destroy a man's reputation and integrity. Men who don't lie are highly respected and trusted because, well, I don't even need to say, they stand by their word, they're consistent in their actions, and you can depend on them. They understand that honesty is the foundation for any healthy relationship, whether it be with friends, family, or romantic partners. When it comes to being a real man, there is no room for sugarcoating or being bending the truth. You gotta be able to face the harsh realities of life and deal with them head on. That means being honest with others, but more importantly, being honest with yourself. Real men don't shy away from uncomfortable conversations or situations. They don't lie to avoid conflict or keep up appearances. Instead, they stand for what they believe in and they speak their damn minds, even when it's hard. This kind of courage and honesty is what sets them apart from the rest. So don't fall into the trap of lying to yourself or others just to avoid confrontation. It might feel like an out, like an easy way at the moment, but I, I guarantee you, whatever problems you think you're saving for today, you are doubling for tomorrow. Embrace the uncomfortable moments and speak your truth, no matter the consequences. That's what real men do. Listen, by watching these videos, I know you aren't one of those losers who think they already know everything. Even if you've only watched one video on this channel, you still clicked on it, and that shows that you have a fire inside of you to start improving. You already showed the willpower. The only thing you need is a path. I've put down ten modules which you can see as ladders. Every module or ladder will exactly explain to you step by step how to get to the top. From achieving peak masculinity, advanced testosterone optimization, getting women, mastering the game of exchanging value, to actual money-making methods, and even more. I have literally laid the groundwork for you to become jacked, attractive, rich, and of high social status. You don't lack motivation. You just lack the knowledge and trust in the path that you're taking. You can continue messing around in the never-ending cycle of taking paths that lead to nothing, or click the link in the description down below. Habit 3. They keep their word. In a world where people break their promises all the time, those who keep their word stand out. These are men who are respected, admired, and trusted. They understand the value of their word and the impact it has on their reputation. If you want to be a man of your word, you have to follow through on your promises, no matter how small or how big they are. If you don't, you will quickly lose the respect of those around you. They'll see you as unreliable, untrustworthy, and just, in general, not worth their time or friendship. For example, if you promise to help your friend move out on Saturday, you better show up Saturday and you're gonna help them move. If you don't, you let them down and they're gonna think twice before ever asking you for help again. They might even think twice before asking you to hang out again. Being a man of your word means that you take your commitment seriously. You don't make promises lightly, and when you do, you follow through. 
It's not just about keeping your word, it's about being honest with yourself and others about what you can and can't do or what you want to and what you don't want to do. Your word is your bond. If you break it, you break the trust and respect others have for you. So be a man of your word and always follow through on your promises, no matter how big or small they are. Chapter 4. They drag everyone and their team up. Men who aren't successful don't climb the ladder alone. They bring others up with them. They understand the value of teamwork and the importance of lifting others up. They don't just focus on their own success, but at the same time, they help others around them achieve their goals. They understand that success is not just about personal achievement, but also about the collective achievement of the team. They do this by being a positive influence on those around them. They are not selfish, nor do they engage in office politics or gossip. Instead, they're honest, they're straightforward with their colleagues, and they work hard to create a positive and productive environment. These successful men lead by example, and they encourage others to do the same. They set high standards for themselves and their team, and they work tirelessly to achieve said standards. If you want to win, if you want to be successful, you need to surround yourself with people who also share your goals, who share your values. You need to build a team that supports you and encourages you, and you need to be willing to do the same for them. Chapter 5. They are open-minded. No successful man is closed-minded, I promise you. Thus, if you want to be, you need to learn to be open-minded. Being open-minded means that you are willing to consider new ideas and perspectives, even if they go against what you currently believe. Successful men are always looking to grow, which means being open to new ways of thinking. It also means being able to adapt to changing circumstances and being flexible in your approach to life. If you're close-minded, you are limiting yourself and your potential. You're closing yourself off to new opportunities and new ideas, and you're also putting up a wall that makes it harder for you to connect with others. Chapter 6. They take responsibility for everything that happens in their life. Successful men don't make excuses. They take responsibility for their actions and the outcomes of their decisions. You need to take ownership of your life. That means accepting that you are in control of your own destiny and that the choices you make have consequences. When things go wrong, successful men don't blame others or make excuses. They own up to their mistakes and take action to correct them. They also learn from their mistakes and use that knowledge to make better decisions in the future. But taking responsibility isn't always easy. It requires humility, honesty, and a willingness to face the truth about you and your actions. It means admitting when you're wrong, which is, I swear, the hardest thing that people can deal with. So many people I know just can't admit that they can be wrong. It's so healthy. You move faster, so you move forward so much faster in life when you just admit that you can be wrong sometimes. When you just apologize when you've hurt somebody and when you make amends when you need to, you aren't perfect and that's fine, that's better. It takes a load off your shoulders to start admitting when you're wrong. It really does. One of the biggest benefits of taking responsibility is that it gives you control of your life. When you accept that you're responsible for your own happiness and success, to a large extent at least, you become empowered to make changes necessary to achieve your goals. On the other hand, refusing to take responsibility is a recipe for failure. When you blame others for your problems, you give away your power and become a victim of circumstance. You become trapped in a cycle of negativity and self-pity, and you miss out on opportunities to grow and learn from your mistakes. We'll round it up right there. Keep the education flowing, my friend. You're slowly changing your values and becoming a great man, or at least a better man than you were yesterday which is the most as any of us can hope for, right? Thanks for watching.